This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. Okay, here's the most expensive drive pedal you'll ever see me demo. I've been interested in one of these for a while and I figured that it might be a thing that for some people, uh, assuming that they could afford it in the first place, which is a bit of a big ask, that it could replace a few pedals. Uh, I love this company and I love some of the things that they've done. I think they're one of the more uh, adventurous pedal companies out there and I like companies that try and do things a little bit different because there's a lot of companies that obviously do the same things as you know everyone else so when there's a chance to try a thing so I bought this used uh, with my own hard-earned money and you're going to know from the title what it is. This is my first time seeing it, my first time playing it. It is the rather beautiful Chase Bliss Automatone. Now, I don't know if you've seen one up close. I haven't. Uh, you know, it's about the size of a hand. Uh, let me... So about the size of two drive pedals, but of course this is programmable, has MIDI. It's got a nice kind of brushed metal feel the wood on it looks like it gets scraped up a little bit but um, I'm interested to see what this thing can do and yeah cool looking pedal can this replace a bunch of pedals for you have you already tried one of these leave a comment below um, let me know your thoughts so I guess the first elephant in the room that you'd have to address with this sort of thing is that it is quite an expensive piece of gear I think what you want to be thinking about is can this replace a couple of drive pedals for you um you know if you could replace two boutique overdrive pedals with it then it's essentially kind of paid for itself right now most drive pedals don't have presets most drive pedals can't do the variety of things that this can do and also you sort of have this kind of digital brain analog feel to it i think that might even be someone's tagline, but I, I can't remember. So when you do this, you'll kind of see the party piece immediately of this device. Now, this is my first time plugging it in. You're not going to learn anything particularly new about the Benson preamp here. It's just going to be me sort of playing around with it and finding what you can do with this thing. And I think hopefully that might be of benefit for some people, but I was interested in this piece of gear. I think it's quite unique for something sort of similar this g drive i bought this recently as well uh you know you've got an eq here before the first gain stage and an eq after this might be one of the more versatile pedals out there as well um but this is what we're dealing with today uh the benson preamp you could buy by itself and i guess you could buy uh, a chase bliss condor and you get some of the the same sorts of tones presumably but um anyway Here's my clean tone. 
and then if I press bypass Now we've got mids that could be pre or post so like I was talking about with that G drive these can be off altogether I guess as well so you could have the pre the clipping circuit or post we can change our diode So those differences are kind of subtle. So there are things like this pre-post and the, you know, I feel like the differences that those make to your tone are, are not huge. The EQ is, is the thing that makes the biggest difference to tone in in my experience rather than clipping diodes um, and the the difference in tone with the clipping diodes presumably would be most when you're activating the most so at higher gain so let's just try <laughs> So yeah, it's sort of like the sort of thing that you get when you change tubes maybe, uh, where you expect there to be a huge difference, but actually it's like a small percentage of the change. The EQ thing is, for me, where you can make more drastic changes to tones. If we look at some of the sample settings, I wanted to just quickly dial in some of these things. So a Tone Pony, which presumably is going to be the Clon Centaur, uh, if we put this to Germanium, move the treble down to about here, mids to about here and uh, then we also need frequency a bit lower bass about here gain about here apparently uh, now this is apparently going to be clonish <laughs> another preset here which is called fat black panel so this is kind of scooping things <laughs> Thank you. 
So if I hold this for save, is that then saved? Yeah. So really easy to program in a couple of sounds. So let's. Okay. So an another thing I could do if I wanted to um, maybe get this a little bit more kind of user friendly off of the gate. Um, so if we start with this zero preset here, so this is uh, going to be. If I set this jump button, if I set it to be red, it should skip to preset five. Uh, so. So we've got our kind of um, black panel sound. So that could be our clean sound. So then I press save. And because I got this jump button here, it should jump to preset five now. So I could then dial in preset five to be something different. Uh, so let's, what is this at the moment? A higher gain tone. If I set this to be zero, then I've eff effectively created a, a preset kind of little loop here where I can go between preset zero and five. So I'm kind of toggling. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's... cool pedal I think. Now I got a comment yesterday on the Strymon plugin review from a chap who thought uh, you know that my sole purpose is pretty much to um, crap on premium gear. Now in my view if you charge you know quite a lot of money for a device whether it's a VST or whatever you'd better hope that it works well and so for me and David Beebe our experience with the Strymon Blue Sky Guy plugin I mean for me on my Windows machine, one of them it didn't work at all in Reaper, and then it could work in another DAW, but it's a, an inefficiently coded VST essentially. So I think it's fair to say there are some devices out there which are not necessarily super praiseworthy. Um, this, on the other hand, the Chase Bliss preamp Mark II, I think you'd have to say yes, it's expensive, but you can sort of see why, right? Because you've crammed in sort of three pedals, you've crammed in the Benson preamp, you've got the aspects of the Condor in there and you've also got a fuzz pedal. Then layer on top of that you've got this kind of automated slider system, um, you've got MIDI capabilities, you've got presets. I can see why this is an expensive pedal, right? It's not just a boutique thing, it's like a piece of technology that has taken a lot of work. I think it looks really cool, it sounds really good, which is the crucial thing. Uh, so, you know, things that I've really enjoyed about it, that raw kind of drive sound to it, it just sounds really good, right? Uh, just on like first tweaking, at least, it's easy to set up these presets, easy to save. I'm imagining you'd have to like read a bit of the manual to get into the expression pedal and the MIDI stuff. But for me, the, the way that you'd want to justify it, I think, is you, you kick off a couple of pedals off of your board, maybe couple of boutique pedals and you say right well this can do the job of these and there's certain things with this that you definitely couldn't do with other pedals. The other thing to note though that although this could replace two pedals in and of themselves so say you had like a Boss SD1 and a Boss OD3 on your board the one thing that you can't quite tackle with this is that kind of stacking element so that's one sort of negative if it is a negative, I think you know that as a limitation before you go in, but so there are a bunch of tones that you can get from stacking two other drive pedals uh, in a way that this can't quite replicate that, although it can do a good job of individual pedals. Uh, so you could kick a fuzz off your board with this, you could kick a drive pedal, you could kick a boost pedal off, 
quite a lot of jobs, I imagine. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Have you had one of these? Did you dig it? Did you not? I think Chase Bliss have done a really good job of turning that into a thing. I think there are other pedals out there that can do this sort of thing. The Kernham Ridge might be one of the newer ones. Um, also Strymon, the Sunset and Strymon Riverside, you could do similar jobs with one of those and they're a little bit cheaper as well. Um, but nothing that's quite, I think, as attractive as that. A hefty price tag, but I think for what you get, could be worth it.